All right, welcome to the experiment number three, pre-lab safety and equipment training video. We're gonna learn about fire and acid safety, different types of the flames that you can make today with your Bunsen burner, and then just some really good things about experiment three. I'm glad you've joined me. Let's get right to it. And there's a video on uh, how to use the Bunsen burners uh, also linked in Learning Hab, so you should go watch that. But let's watch this one first. So fire safety. You should know where the fire extinguisher is. There's a gas shutoff valve. Your TA knows where it is. You should know where it is. We should go run and turn that off if something happens if there's a fire. Tie your hair back. No loose clothing. Keep all that away. To start the flame, we're going to use what's called a sparker, a striker. And you're going to use friction to create the flame. It can be kind of hard at first, but then we're not having matches that we're throwing away in the trash and starting another fire. So a little bit more about that coming up. One of the other big safety hazards is dealing with a really strong acid. We're gonna use that to dissolve our carbonate solids. So what do you do if you spill it? Well, you have two choices. If you spill it on yourself, on your skin, please run immediately, not run, quickly go to the nearest sink. It doesn't matter which one because you need tap water and all the sinks in the lab have tap water. Just go there, open it up, Get some nice tap water in there, a couple minutes running. It'll neutralize it, wash it, dilute it. It's good. Dilution is the solution there. But if you spill it on the countertop, we want to go to the chemical safety shelf, get some baking soda, sodium hydrogen carbonate, it'll say for acid spills. Pour some powder on the spilled acid that will neutralize it. And then we're going to wipe it up with a sponge or paper towels, uh, wet paper towels, wet sponge. Here's the picture of the chemical safety shelf, and right there, that bottle labeled in red, sodium hydrogen carbonate is for acid spills. That's the powder you would pour on if it's on the countertop. So you've got two choices to make. If it's on you, rinse, countertop, we're going to uh, soak it up with some of that solid. It will neutralize it and then wipe and clean up. Uh, so we're going to use six molar hydrochloric acid. You may say, what did you just say? Well, six molar is... Um, almost one of the co highest concentrations you can get. 12 molar is the highest. 12 molar is 38% uh, hydrogen chloride. It's, it's, the, it's the highest concentration you can get. So six molar is just half of that. So it's been diluted in half, super strong. Uh, you have a couple of seconds, maybe even 20, 30 seconds uh, on your skin to get over, get it rinsed off. Uh, or else, if you let it sit on your skin, you may turn into one of these stories. Go look up the Bethany Storo story. Quite interesting. Very much defigured her face by uh, having acid thrown into it. Who threw it may surprise you. Okay, about the lab. Everybody's filling out their own lab worksheet. Everybody turns in their own lab worksheet. Everybody fills out the Google form. You, you're doing this on, uh, you're doing it with a partner, but you write down stuff. It's the writing that makes it stick in your head. If you're watching someone else do it, not going to happen. So most of the things you need will be in your uh, locker. Um, your TA, though, is going to give you an unknown solid, and you're going to weigh out about 0.5 grams. But you have to do it accurately. What does that mean? Well, I mean, just something close to 0.5, but you have to use all the digits on the balance. So if you got 0.4915, great. If you got 0.5128, fine. But if you weigh out a gram, no. No, we'll take points off. When we ask you to weigh out 0.5, there's a reason for it. We've thought about all the reagents you need, and the safety of it. And if you're doing something in excessive amounts, a couple percent excess, not a big deal. But if you're doubling it, no, that's bad news. Uh, we'll check for that when we grade. Um, strikers, clay triangles, a lot of things are around you in the community lockers or close by uh, your, your stations. Chemicals, uh, maybe in the few months, we may actually put them uh, by the balance uh, near your station this year. If you need gloves to deal with uh, the acids, we'll have some in the lab or in the stock room. The gas valve, let's talk about that real quick. This is something people get wrong. If you're not sure what valve to turn, you can ask. Um, you're welcome to just look and see if it says the word gas on it. It's blue. Now that should give you, so you got to hook up gas to the Bunsen burner. There's a whole video on the training. I hope you go look at that. Uh, it can be kind of windy in our labs because we've got good airflow. And we can have some pieces of paper for you to block um, the breeze. There are, are many types of flames that you can make. The coolest one is yellow. It's about 300 degrees. 
And as you uh, open up the barrel, it'll let more oxygen in. Once again, go watch my training video. You can get up to seven, 800 degrees, the roaring blue flame. The Bunsen burner is a barrel that mixes air with the gas coming in from the gas valve. And uh, the rotating barrel changes the amount of air that comes in. So please keep your things safe. We have crucible tongs, you're using a crucible. Wear a glove um, as you are moving things from the clay triangle to uh, the countertop. Countertop can with, uh, withstand quite a bit of heat. Um, and so that's where you're gonna want things to cool down. You can pinch things with the crucible tongs. You can try to uh, cup it, uh, just be very careful. I would move it around uh, with the tongs and with a gloved hand and then carefully take it down to the countertop. Uh, once again, you can tell how hot the flame is um, from yellow to blue. Do not use the yellow flame to heat anything. Now it's great to get it started. So you close uh, the barrel clockwise, close it down. That's easy to light. That's how you want to light it. But don't have your setup nearby. You don't want any soot getting on your uh, experimental setup. Soot is extra weight. Weight will throw off your measurements. Bad news. So you get the flame nice and hot in the blue uh, by opening up the barrel, twisting it counterclockwise. And then that's when you move the flame. You can move the Bunsen burner around while it's on. It's okay. And you move it underneath your setup. No one said you had to have it all set up uh, uh, together. So get it lit somewhere else and then slide it into your setup. In fact, you're going to want to move it around today uh, in your experiment when you're lighting things. Okay. Yellow is the coolest flame, leaves lots of soot. Okay. We don't want that. We don't want that luminous Bunsen flame. It's easy to start up things, but it's, it's not good for heating things. All right. We want the hottest part of the flame. It's really kind of, it'll be a double flame as you'll see. And so keep it near that. Uh, here's a picture of the setup, just so you can see it. Uh, the clay triangle holding the crucible and crucible cover. You got tongs, your Bunsen burner, all hooked there, and you got your ring stand. If you want to be successful in today's lab, I think one of the hardest steps is the very last one. You're, ha you're adding hydrochloric acid, which is dangerous, but it's going to uh, neutralize and dissolve this uh, carbonate that you're dealing with. So you want to you want to dissolve it. You want to dissolve the carbonate. That's the chemical endpoint you're trying to get to. Then you're going to boil off the hydrochloric acid in water. And if you heat it too hot, it will just pop all over. You're going to lose a lot of things, your mass, and it'll be popping. Follow the directions. Be very careful on that very, very, very last step of boiling off the hydrochloric acid and the water that remains. Okay, so uh, just remember to clean up. We're going to spritz down, uh, you know, wipe everything down when you get done. Uh, put common chemicals back where you found them, clean up the balances. We'll be checking for that. That's part of your safety points. So please consider these questions. I'll leave the PDF file in the Learning Hub of everything you just saw here so you can have it uh, at your disposal uh, for things. Thanks for watching and uh, I know you have a great lab. Just be safe and as always if you have questions you can ask a uh, teaching assistant or you can ask myself. And I look forward to seeing you in lab. Thanks.